Victor Bout, an arms dealer sentenced to 25 years in a U.S. prison, has reportedly been negotiating the sale of firearms to Iran-backed Houthi militants in Yemen after his release through a prisoner swap. The Wall Street Journal reported this, citing a European security official and other sources familiar with the matter. Bout, often referred to as the Merchant of Death, was released nearly two years ago following a high-profile prisoner exchange between the US and Russia. According to the Wall Street Journal sources, Bout has since established contact with Iranian-backed Houthi militants in Yemen and is negotiating a deal to sell small arms, including AK-74 rifles valued at 10 million US dollars. While in prison, Bout had a portrait of Russian President Vladimir Putin on his cell wall and expressed strong support for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. His release in December 2022 came after a swap with American basketball player Brittany Griner, who had been convicted in Russia for alleged drug possession. Since his release, Bout has frequently appeared on Russian television offering commentary on Russian politics and criticism of the US. Russian media often cite him as an expert on arms trading. When Houthi emissaries went to Moscow in August to negotiate the purchase of 10 million US dollars worth of automatic weapons, they encountered a familiar face, the mustachioed bout. Wall Street Journal reports. According to Wall Street Journal sources, the negotiations centered on the supply of AK-74 rifles with additional discussions about the sale of Cornet anti-tank systems and anti-aircraft weapons. These arms deliveries could reportedly begin in October, disguised as shipments of food products to the port of Hodaida, where Russia has already delivered grain. In the days since Israel intensified its campaign against Hezbollah in Lebanon, including the strike that killed the militant group's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, Yemen's Iran-backed Houthi rebels have been quick to show they are an important player in the complex conflicts convulsing the Middle East. In a brazen attack, the Houthis fired a ballistic missile at Israel's main airport. It is expected that the Houthis will use the weapons bought from the Russians against Israel. Recall, Bout gained notoriety in 2005 when the US imposed sanctions on him for trading weapons in exchange for diamonds with former Liberian president and convicted war criminal, Charles Taylor. He was also accused by UN experts of violating international arms embargoes on Angola and the Democratic Republic of Congo. In 2008, Bout was arrested in Thailand during a sting operation by US Drug Enforcement Administration agents posing as Colombian rebels. He was sentenced to 25 years in prison, but served only 12 before his release in the 2022 prisoner exchange. The aggression in the rhetoric of the Putin regime is growing. Deputy Chairman of the Russian Security Council, the second person in the state, Dmitry Medvedev, has unleashed a new portion of threats and insults against unfriendly countries and their leaders. The post was published on his official Telegram channel. Medvedev spoke harshly about Latvia. He called the country non-existent and also wished its president, Rinkevich's, serious injuries. The president of the non-existent country, Latvia, broke his arm. Too bad it wasn't his neck. We're waiting, wrote a representative of Putin's regime. In addition, he supported the scandalous idea of the president of the Russian Skiing Federation, Elena Vialby, to launch a missile strike on the center of London so that Russian athletes would be allowed to participate in international competitions. That's right, of course, but we need to solve the problem at its root and immediately sink the damned island of the Anglo-Saxons, Medvedev wrote. He also couldn't resist insulting Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, who announced some important decisions at the upcoming Ramstein meeting. Apparently, these words of the Ukrainian leader greatly alarmed the Kremlin. Medvedev has not forgotten the signature theme, nuclear threats. He threatens to hand over tactical nuclear weapons to Belarus and to set fire in Kiev. Even Russian Z channels are openly laughing at Medvedev's new batch of threats. In particular, the ultra-right blogger Alex Parker returns, spoke out. He was outraged that the deputy chairman of the Russian Security Council is threatening to protect Belarus from Ukraine while a significant part of Russia's territory in the Kursk region remains under the control of the Ukrainian armed forces. I'm embarrassed to ask. 
But who should Russia turn to in order to use tactical nuclear weapons against the Ukrainians on the grounds that the war has already been transferred to the Kursk region? Wrote an angry ultra-patriot. Recall, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania and Poland will seek EU funding to build a network of bunkers, barriers, distribution lines and military warehouses along their borders with Russia and Belarus. The three Baltic countries who are all NATO members initially announced the plan for a Baltic defense line in January. Then in May, Poland announced a similar project called the Eastern Shield with a purpose to strengthen its borders with the Russian exclave of Kaliningrad and with Belarus. The need for a Baltic defense line stems from the security situation and supports NATO's new forward defense concept, Estonian Defense Minister Hanno Pevkor said in a statement, adding that it is extremely important to coordinate our activities with Poland.